Hi viewers, this is SkyFi Audio coming at you from Glen Rock, New Jersey. Uh, please visit us at skyfiaudio.com and uh, subscribe if you like this video and we'll uh, be sure to bring you more. Today we've got something pretty neat, uh, a real sweet combination from Macintosh from the 70s, um, the MR78FM tuner and the matching MPI4 performance indicator. Uh, this is, uh, starting with the tuner, one of the best tuners Macintosh has ever made, and one of the last of the analog tuners. After this uh, came the MR80, which had digital display and uh, and memory functions. But in terms of performance, many will agree that the MR78 is the nicest tuner from Macintosh. Um, we've got it paired up with uh, the icing on the cake, the MPI4 performance indicator. This is a really neat unit. Um, it's more of an oscilloscope than anything else help, to help you sort of dialing your tuner and your stereo for as a matter of fact there are functions in there to not just calibrate your tuner reception but also some of the parameters of your stereo uh, obviously they go together they're from the same era they've got the same look you know glass face plate the chrome end caps and the same type of buttons um, so today I thought I'd um, do an overview. Since I do have both of these units on the bench, I was just uh, performing calibration on the MPI-4 for our client. Uh, so then I said, well, let me uh, see if I can do a quick video here and show it off uh, with its matching MR-78. Um, so up until about the MR-80, I believe there were special connections on the back to allow you to connect a performance indicator. Um, so that's why these sort of match well together. What I've got it is I've got it set up here on our, on our test rig and our bench. Um, got a knob or test grid. I've got an FM modulator up there uh, and all sorts of other doohickeys. But uh, as far as viewers are concerned, you you keep this together. This is really a, a real nice set. Uh, if you're lucky to find enough, if you're lucky enough to find an MPI four, which are fairly rare, especially in good shape, this one happens to be in in really really nice shape. Um, calibration uh, was just completed where I went through all the settings and, and centered and uh, all the internal potentiometers so that the display is just about right. I have one more little adjustment here uh, for the uh, VU indicator, but uh, it's pretty much done. Uh, we're lucky enough to have the service manual on this unit. Um, This is a pretty rare piece of uh, original service manual for the MPI-4, and this really helps you dial it in. It's one of the best laid out service manuals that Macintosh has made. Uh, here you go, MPI-4 service information, where it's not only a circuitry and uh, schematics and everything you need to troubleshoot, but it has a really nice uh, alignment instructions that are fairly simple to follow uh, with the appropriate internal adjustments, as well as a ton of test points and what the resulting uh, value should be for each of the test points. Very well laid out. So I just finished that and I thought I'd show you the inside of the MPI-4 so you can kind of get a sense of how these things are made. Um, uh, simple design, but very well laid out. Uh, really nice to work on and, uh, and service which is not always the case with Macintosh stuff, but um, they certainly kept it in mind in this one. Unfortunately, some of the serviceability features make it a little less reliable, uh, and particularly these cards. Uh, this is the power supply card, and this is a driver card here, um, and they are held in place by these four little uh, plastic standoffs, and they sort of um, plug into place. You'll see here there's uh, about 12 connections on this power supply card, uh, so that to service it, you just kind of squeeze the four posts in the corners and pull it out. Uh, and same for the driver card. Well, unfortunately, in shipping, these tend to come out. So we'll have to secure it and, and probably ship it with, uh, with some sort of internal packing to make sure that the cards stay in place. So the chassis is, is divided halfway through, and up top are the cards, and below are all the connections, all the point-to-point -point connections. And then uh, behind... And if you were to move the bottom, you'd have access to all the controls, the potentiometers and the uh, selectors. Here's a cathode ray tube. Again, this is really an oscilloscope function that's built into this unit. A power transformer here in the far corner and pretty good quality componentry throughout. It looks like mostly hand soldered. So let's, um, 
Let's cover this up and talk about some of the capabilities of the MPI-4. Go to the front. And then the lights. All right, cool. So we've got a, we're taking a CD and we're modulating it with a, a Sencore uh, FM modulator. I dialed it so that it's transmitting at 98 uh, megahertz. And as you can see, then I've taken the tuner and I've tuned it to 98 megahertz. Um, the Suncor uh, FM modulator allows us to sort of analyze uh, the results of an FM signal and also have like a calibration standard. Um, rather than rely on an FM reception over the aerial, we happen to be in a valley and FM reception isn't great right here, even though we're in a great market for, for FM stations. Uh, where our shop is, it happens to be fairly low area compared to the transmission towers, which happen to be in either Newark or New York City. So what we do is we take a, the output from a CD player, which is back there. There is a CD player and it is connected to our Ascentcore device, which happens to be here. And then we retransmit it at 98 megahertz through the antenna jack to the back of the FM tuner. So, um, the result of that is that we have the ability to then get a really nice strong signal fed into this tuner. So you see right at 98, this lights up and uh, we get great reception out of it, obviously. It's pretty much being force fed a signal. So the first thing we'll look at uh, for the MPI-4, this is really not a focus on the MR78. We've done other videos for that, but uh, more of a focus on the MPI-4. So. I'll go through the features and functionality. Um, the first thing you'll notice is that the scope has got a pretty uh, strong backlighting on it. And that backlighting is pretty neat. It does have the ability to turn it on and off. But what happens is when you switch through the mode selections, uh, which happens to be four of them, if you count the left and right separately, the color of that reticle will change. So when we go to uh, dual trace, it'll be on green. Then it'll change to red when we go to level, and then amber when it's on stereo, and then blue when it's on multipath. And I'll go through all the different functions so you understand what they are. Now we're feeding this um, MPI-4 through the line level inputs. You can also feed them through an amplifier output, uh, as you would a pair of speakers, and measure the actual wattage of, of, those, of the amplifier. But we've got it hooked up to preamp, so we use the power level selector to put it on preamp mode and that gives us the signal that we need. From right to left we've got um, power and gain controls on the far right, the power level which I just showed you, anywhere between 1000 watts and 0.1 watts. Uh, intensity is how bright the display shows. Vertical and horizontal are, are X and Y alignment and the uh, sweep um, moves it left to right. Uh, and narrows the uh, the range. Um, then mode selectors that we talked about, we've got several of them. Let's see if I can get on there. The we'll start with the level. Level is one of the neatest ones and the most commonly used. Uh, it's essentially two VU meters here, and as we feed a signal to it and we raise our gain, the VU meter will respond. Pretty neat. This would be done if you're maybe setting up a turntable and you want to see the difference in signal strength between the left and right channels, maybe for adjusting the azimuth, or you're uh, trying to center the balance on your preamp. Uh, the VU meter would be a great function for that. Moving to the next one, we've got uh, the left and right. Uh, this is also neat. Uh, if we push them together, we can display the left and right channels. And uh, if we, that's the right channel, and that's the left channel. Let me give it a little more light so you can see. Yeah, we can see a little better. Now. So again, that was the dual trace. Both channels right there. A little vertical adjustment. Left channel independently and the right channel independently. Back to level. The next thing we're going to talk about is the, let's go over the stereo. The stereo is uh, mostly used for, 
for calibrating a tuner yet, it'll also work when you're just listening to regular music. Um, what we do with uh, this particular mode, the way this uh, unit's designed, the left channel is, is broadcast or displayed on the horizontal axis while the white the right channel is on the Y axis. So essentially we're measuring the difference between the left and the right channel and we're displaying it. So uh, a perfect, if you think uh, this is our left channel and this is a right channel, if we were to feed them equally, we'd probably get a, about a 45 degree signal, which is what we're getting here. So if we change the reception right now to mono, we get a pure clean left and right display. Yet if we go to into stereo, now we'll start seeing the difference between the two. And you can see that it, as the stereo light clicks on and off. So this allows you to sort of visualize a stereo signal versus a mono signal, which is pretty neat. There we go. Okay, the next thing is the multipath. That's also a function for calibrating a tuner. This is what you would use to uh, orient your antenna, um, if you wanted to figure out what the right um, or the optimal direction for your FM antenna would be for a particular station, now mind you that stations come from all different directions, um, you would use the multipath feature on the MPI-4 to visually understand what the right alignment is. So I'm going to change it over. Oh, and by the way, for that you need to connect um, the test points out of the FM tuner into the MPI-4. You can't do that with a left and right regular output. You actually have to tap into specific parts on a, on a tuner to measure that performance. So if we go to multipath and we center it, this is a representation of multipath. So as we move the, um, the tuner, the tuning knob left and right, you'll see that we get a pretty good arc and centering that arc as well as possible and then messing around with your antenna will give you the best multi-path performance or allow you to identify what the best multi-path performance is. Okay. Then at the top of the unit, there's quite a bit of adjustments as well. I'm gonna go through them just in case you've gotten one of these and you can't get it to display properly, which is a very common thing. There's so many adjustments on this particular unit that people struggle often to, to get it to display properly, but let's go through it one by one. So first, Obviously, the power indicator has to be on the correct input, which is line level. And then, over here we've got the level mode. Uh, this is neat. This goes together with the with the level indicator. So, remember this thing with the two bar lines. Uh, we can even measure the live, or we can actually measure the the highest point, which is kind of averaging it out. And then there's the ability to reset it back to zero. So. That's what this particular left selector is for, to go between normal peak and then the reset. It's just a momentary toggle. The redis elimination is, or the reticle elimination is, uh, essentially turns off the lighting on the display. And that's backlighting, not to do, nothing to do with the uh, actual green areas. A low pass filter is to filter at the lower frequencies. Leave that to out. Now focus is, uh, Self-explanatory, you kind of look at the, the signal and you try to get the cleanest and narrowest line as possible or not. The source trigger, um, this is for the oscilloscope function, whether you want to trigger on the left channel, the right channel, or the line input, leave that on the line. Uh, trace, separa trace separation and sweep expansion should be on the middle parts. Multipath polarity, doesn't really matter, minus or plus, either one will work fine. And then for signal strength deviation, Audio trim, left and right, everything should just be in the middle position. So you can see that. All right, let's have a look at the rear of the unit. I'm gonna disconnect a few things in order to get it to spin, but I'll remove the antenna in particular. So having a close look at the back of the unit, um, 
from left to right, we've got the, the half amp fuse, uh, convenience outlet for plugging in some other device, but perhaps a tuner. And then the power amp input. So we talked about feeding this unit with either line level, which we'd be done right here at the left and right inputs, or at the speaker level, which is here, left and right speakers. And in order to measure the pro properly the output in wattage, you've got to obviously set your impedance, which is 4, 8, or 16 ohms. Uh, these audio outputs are essentially pass-throughs, so you can go between your preamp, the MPI-4, and then back out to your amplifier. And these are the two connections here that we talked about. These are the signal strength and the deviation, test point one and test point two, which are available for us down a little further on the MR78 tuner on this side here. See test point one and test point two. These are the ones that are specific to the Macintosh tuners mostly. And then for the FM, it's just a variable and fixed outputs on the audio side, as well as the coax or stripped uh, single antennas, either 75 or 300 ohms. So here you have it, the Macintosh MPI-4 with the MR78. Um, a real match made in heaven. That's all I've got for today. Thanks for watching uh, SkyFi Audio. Uh, please uh, remember to subscribe and uh, check back soon, see what else we're doing. Thank you.